Hello and congratulations for everything uh, you do. This is your third time in Romania, right? That is right. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel here? I love it here. It's a really great place. The fans are super, super friendly. And uh, Bucharest is a beautiful city. I love the architecture. And yeah, I, I'd like to hang out here more. So you kind of put pop music in like a time machine. Uh, well, how did it all start? What's the story? Yeah, so um, a bunch of us were living in New York City. And uh, Scott Bradley, my good friend, he's the one that started inviting us over to his his teeny tiny apartment in Queens uh, to start doing covers of modern songs done in an old timey jazzy way or uh, or like in a Motown way or something like that and then he started putting the videos uh, out on YouTube and, and promoting them and after about a year, year and a half of, of making the videos and having a few viral hits then we got some tours booked and now we have over a hundred people that we work with. Uh, we played on six out of seven continents, and uh, it just it just gets better and better. You know, we've been to, to Europe so many times. We played at the Sydney Opera House, Radio City Music Hall. We just played in Istanbul for the first time for 3,500 people. So it's it's really been a wild ride. Yeah, very cool. And uh, how do you choose the musicians you work with? Uh, have you ever had like a, I don't know a request from? A pop icon or something like that to sing with you? We haven't had like Beyonce come in like and, and, and ask us uh, that that would be amazing. Beyonce, if you're watching this, we need you to come and sing a song with us. Um, but no, we've had a lot of a lot of people, a lot of very talented people that have been on Broadway, some of the best jazz singers in New York, people that have been in finalists on American Idol and just I mean really this is truly um, this project is filled with some of the best musicians on the whole planet and I'm always proud to work with these people and I've just learned so much from the great musicians here. And about the technical part, uh, how do you link the song with the genre, the musical style? How do you choose? Uh, you know, it's sort of, um, you know, Scott Bradley, he's, he's, a, he's a genius musician and, and I think sometimes he has some ideas in his head, um, uh, you know, to try something new, you know, all about that bass done with uh, upright bass, I mean, that really like, you know, makes you think it changes the, the meaning of the song. But um, oftentimes it's just really just collaborating and sort of free association um, with the singers and they get together and the singer has a list of songs and then Scott is just, he's amazing. He just starts playing different things like automatically and uh, usually within a half an hour, hour, they have some really, really strong ideas of arrangements that they want to do and styles they want to do. So it's just like, just trying things out sometimes. Uh, now going back to the beginning, uh, what did you feel when your first video got viral like that? Oh, it it was it was uh, it was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, it was complete disbelief. I mean, you know, we thought we'd get some attention, but then when you start getting, you know, one million, two million, five million, five million views. Yeah, some of the videos now have like 20 million views. It's unbelievable. So um, it's just it's great. I just I love that there's. There are people out there that that have an appetite for for you know high level arrangements for fantastic you know singers, fantastic performers, and it just just makes me happy that that people want to see that kind of stuff, you know, because it's to me it's it's important music, you know. So there's a high level of artistry there. And I think you thought about this that you actually have a educational role for for the young generation to know more about jazz music and swing music. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I really love it when, for me, the biggest compliment is when someone comes up to me and says, and says, you know, I started playing the upright bass, you know, because you, because I saw you do it. And, you know, when I was a, a kid, you know, we had, you know, some, some jazz bands that we really liked and, you know, funk bands and a, a lot of ska bands. Those are the, the, the kind of music that they played, you know, like instruments that I learned in school. So they were really influential for me in becoming a musician. So I just hope that I can do something similar for, for younger people and that they keep this. It's really important, you know, for our world to have this kind of music because it really brings like everyone together. It's not just like, oh, it's only for the young people. You know, it's like we have a lot of young people that, that love our music. Well, it's not just for the old people too, but we have a lot of old people. You know, I've seen everybody from, you know, three-year-olds to 90-year-olds, you know, at our show and everything in between. And it's just, it's so cool to bring people together. And um, how do you choose the songs uh, you cover? You also take suggestions from fans. I guess you have like a lot of uh, comments on YouTube. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I we definitely have um, a way for for fans, you know, to to get in touch, and it's you know through all of our social media stuff, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and so fans are suggesting things, and I, you know, sometimes those those suggestions make their way onto our, our uh, you know PMJ stuff. Whether uh, Scott Bradley does something called Piano Grams, where he just takes requests um, from fans, and then he you know plays it you know on the piano, and they, they, they yeah, they, I've I've done a few of those myself with Scott. And um, and then yeah, I think uh, sometimes the fans have suggested uh, uh, things that have become videos. So it's nice to have the the, the dialogue with the fans to see you know see what they want and uh, to be able to agree with them and, and provide that. Uh, and uh, what kind of uh, music you used to listen to when you were like a teenager? A musician that influenced you in particular, not only one. Yeah, I mean, I I have always liked a lot of different types of music. Uh, I think the, the you know, I, when I started listening to jazz, I really liked Miles Davis and uh, Charles Mingus. I enjoyed that a lot. And then, um, but the the musician that really got me playing the the bass uh, was Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, I used to play cello before that, but I, then I saw Flea and I wanted to start doing like slap, ba slap bass. Yeah, and uh, and so I mean the Red Hot Chili Peppers has huge effect on on a lot of you know musicians my my age, older and a lot younger. So I mean they're just they're they're great musicians. From all the songs you have covered, uh, do you remember like a particular feedback from the original artists? Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty often that that people that um, like you know Beyonce has retweeted us and Gwen Stefani has retweeted us, uh, Nickelback and a, a, like a bunch of others. So it's it's pretty often that they they see the videos and they like the videos because they appreciate you know what we're doing with their song and we're doing at a really high like world class you know level. And I think that they you know I think there's a, a level of like respect. And, and honor that comes along with having your song, you know, remade with these like you know fantastic musicians. Um, so it's and it's pretty cool. And then you know, they their fans see it and their fans you know come to us and you know and we take the songs of you know whoever and we and we show them to our fans and it's just like it's a lot of a uh, cross pollination, you know. Yeah, cross sharing. Cross sharing. There you go. Um, what comes next? Yeah, I mean, I think that. For postmodern jukebox, it's just continuing continuing to expand uh, to new places. I mean, we just played a bunch of new places in uh, in Morocco and Tunisia and in Istanbul. We'd never played there before, and it's uh, yeah, first time in all those places. Our first time in in Africa, you know, in Morocco and Tunisia, and um, you know, I think it's to, to to develop the live show. The live show always changes so every time you come see PMJ it's gonna be something different you're gonna have different singers you're gonna have different songs and so it's you can always come back and and check it out another time and, and have just a very different and really really like wonderful experience so I think we're trying to develop the live show a little bit more have some like different themes and of course like work with you know with new people and make new new songs And what was the most impressive venue you have ever played Oh God, there's so many. I I like them all for a variety of reasons, but I think the ones that stand out for me as being important is uh, the Sydney Opera House. I got to play at the Sydney Opera House, like one of the most famous buildings in the whole world. Uh, Radio City Music Hall was that was also a big one. Um, uh, the Kennedy Center, that was like that was a really cool one. So um, it's just it's been unbelievable for me. It's been a great ride. Well, uh, can't wait to see the show. Thank you and good luck. Yeah, good to meet you, Ingrid. Nice to meet you. Cheers.